Hello everyone! I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. You can see it right there. The cat is pointing to it. You can get that wherever books are sold. Barnes & Noble, Amazon.com, Audible.com. Pretty Miss Kitty wanted to be in the video this time. She tries to get into all my videos by knocking things over, by climbing up on the shelves. I thought I'd let her just, you know, help me with this review of Nemesis Game, book number five in James S.A. Corey's fantastic science fiction series, The Expanse. And you can see how excited Miss Kitty is about the series. Look at that. She just can't get enough of them. She's trying to get to them right now. Yes. Let's talk about the expense. Let's put Miss Kitty down before she, um, down, down. There you go. Off you go. <coughs> okay. Let's get serious now. Enough cat nonsense. Nemesis Game, book number five of The Expanse by James S.A. Corey. Pseudonym for Ty Frank and Daniel Abraham. Normally I don't like collaborations, but with this series here, The Expanse, I give an exception because these guys are doing a great job with this series. I love it. Love this series. You know, the first three books, we're going to do spoilers for the first three to four books to set up book number five. I will not do spoilers for book number five itself or the um, pr the uh, the books that come after that, which are these here. I think there's eight in the series so far. I think there's going to be a ninth one or a tenth one coming out soon. But we will not spoil those, but we will be spoiling the first four books here. Books one through three take place within our own solar system, where our heroes are dealing with Mars and the outer planets and the asteroid belt and Earth and... All the political tr intrigue and adventure that can happen just within our own solar system. Now, um, in book four, they discover a Stargate that will lead them off into other universes, other galaxies, things like that. Read my, or, well, Go watch my reviews of those novels because I give a much more exciting breakdown of, the, of what's going on in the series than I just gave. But what happened is in the end of book four... Or at, during book four, they're, they're in the Stargate and they're off doing adventures on other planets. At the beginning of this book, book number five, our heroes of the Risonante, the spaceship Risonante, or Riconante, I still haven't figured out how to say that, they, they return out of the Stargate back to our own solar system and their spaceship is in need of some major repairs. Now, what I like about this book, more than I liked about the previous books, is... You know, the previous books were told from a lot of different perspectives. Not only from the perspectives of the heroes of our spaceship, our main heroes, but a lot of other perspectives of different people and stuff throughout the um, solar system and throughout the story. This book really just concentrates on our four main heroes. Our crew of the Risonante finally gets their... One book to, to just be solely about them and not all the other nonsense going on. And it gets a, this book gets a lot of negative reviews for that because it just does concentrate on those four characters, our four main heroes. As their ship is in need of repairs, what happens is our four main heroes go their separate ways <clears throat> to take care of some of their own personal business. And that's the crux of the story. You know, gone are all the political intrigues, it seems like, at first. Now that we're, now we're just dealing with the personal stories and backstories of our main heroes. But I like that. I like learning uh, the backstories of our four main heroes. And our four main heroes are, you know, the captain of the ship, Holden, and Amos, and Naomi, and Alex, the pilot. And... <clears throat> We, go, we get to see these four characters split up and go their separate ways for the entire book. You know, Holden stays with the ship and helps supervise the uh, repairs on the ship. 
on the Risonante. And he gets into some uh, political intrigue of his own, you know, with the Stargate. You know, where they're wondering if the Stargate's going to close itself up. Or, what's, or what the UN and the Mars and, and Earth uh, governments are going to be doing with that. Uh, we're wondering, uh, there, there's a lot of stuff. I won't get into the plot stuff, but uh, our captain captain of the ship, Holden, he stays with the Risonante to supervise the repairs of the ship. Whereas Amos decides he wants to go to Earth. And while he's there... Um, there's a terrorist attack on Earth involving an asteroid, which was pretty cool. Uh, Alex, the captain of the ship, he wants to go to Mars and reconcile with his ex-wife. And while on Mars, he meets up with one of our other main characters from books previous, Bobby Draper, who was the, one of the Marines that was... Uh, her, her, uh, her Marine Corps was killed by the alien super soldier in book number two, but anyway, they reconnect with Bobby. So it was good to see Bobby Draper again and Alex. And um, so they're on Mars doing their thing. And then Naomi goes to Ceres to uh, find her son. And then there's another kidnapping plot. There seems to be a lot of kidnapping plots in this series, but that's fine. I like that. So those are the four branches of story that we get. And I think it's great because in each branch of those stories, and we, we each chapter is told from a different perspective of each of those characters. And so rotating through the four characters as they're on their adventure, you know, they're each on their own little adventure, separate from each other at this time. And you really get to learn sort of the backstory of each character, where they came from, all that stuff, the stuff that you did not necessarily know in previous books. And so I thought this was a great way for the authors, Ty Frank and Dave, Daniel Abraham, to get the uh, reader familiar, more familiar with our heroes and, and their backstory and where they came from and how they cope with things on their own without their friends to help them. And though they are four separate stories going on at the same time, they all do tie together at the end and I thought this was one of the better um, <clears throat> episodes in the uh, Expanse series I liked it like I said it gets a lot of heat for its sort of different structure it's got a different structure to it aside from all the other novels and so it gets a lot of heat in reviews for that but I thought it was great it's one of my favorite Favorite entries into the series, book number five, Nemesis Game. I really liked it. As you know, I love this series all together. Uh, this one, this book number five rates was one of the highest. Probably it's tied for first place with, with Leviathan Wakes, the first book. So I give Nemesis Game a nine out of ten. Uh, I thought it was really good. I, it really engaged me the whole time. I loved everything about it. And so, you know, I, I did... If you've watched my previous reviews, you know, the books are kind of like this for me. All of them, all of them rated pretty high, but not all of them a, a nine, that's for sure. So if you want to watch the other reviews of the previous four, there'll be links to that at the end of this video. If you, uh, and then keep following because uh, over the next few months, I hope to have all of them reviewed by the end of the year. I don't know how soon I will get to them because I'm also reviewing the Stephen King, every Stephen King novel in order of publication. And I'm also reviewing all the Jim Butcher books and I and some Ken Follett books and some Lonesome Dove books. I'm reviewing eventually by the... Uh, I want my channel to have every book I've ever read reviewed. Or at least most every book I've ever read reviewed, which is going to be 3,000 reviews. But I want to leave that on... on uh, I want to kind of leave that legacy of book reviews and how much I enjoyed all these books on YouTube for future generations. Because, you know, 7,000 years from now, people are going to care what I thought about these books that are no longer in existence. <laughs> Actually, they probably will be in existence, you know, with the way technology is. I mean, audible.com, you know, my book is in Audible. And I, can, I and not only that, it's an ebook. You know, the printed versions might disappear. But, you know, the, as long as we've still got electricity and computers and stuff, audible.com and the ebook can last forever. So, you know, yeah, these, these, these video reviews I'm doing 7,000 years from, from now, I mean, I'll probably be like 
the most famous person in the universe because I did all these reviews. I'm just saying. Anyway, 9 out of 10, Nemesis Game. Enough with my nonsense. Go get the book. It's really awesome. Let's see. It's right here. <clears throat> it's right here. I'll give it to you.